Dear Mojang, today we're going to make the largest number we have ever made on this show, and I think it may be the largest number we've ever made on the channel, period. It dwarfs the Mario Plex, and honestly, I think it's going to be the biggest number I will ever make because I am thoroughly done with big numbers. Good lord. And how did I arrive at this number? Well, it was a mix of combinatorics and a passing, passing interest in the Poincare recurrence theorem. I am such a freaking idiot! <laughs> Okay, where to begin? What's the Poincaré recurrence theorem and what's it have to do with Minecraft? Well, it's a theorem named after French mathematician Henri Poincaré and it postulates that in any closed system, in this context what's known as phase space, filled with a predetermined amount of matter in a given state like uh, some hydrogen over there, will eventually, over time, after moving around randomly, eventually return to this original state. And and what does this have to do with Minecraft? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's a dead end. You see, even in really small systems, I'm talking like microscopic, the time it can take for Poincaré recurrence to happen, what's known as Poincaré recurrence time, can be enormous and tremendously complicated to calculate. And what I was gonna do for this episode was to calculate the Poincaré recurrence time of any given Minecraft game, which, well, to give you a sense of how complicated that is, here's a paper on the Poincaré recurrence time of our universe, the time that it would take all all the matter from one state, like the state we're in right now, to reoccur. That would be like you sitting on the toilet watching this video on your phone, James, and would happen all over again exactly like it is now by the time the universe has gone on for a certain period of time. And that time is 10 to the 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 1.1. And you may be asking me, Austin, is that 10 to the 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 1? 0.1 seconds? Years? Millennia? And to that I say, it literally does not matter. The number is so huge that you could never write it down in full, and it's so large that if you divide it into Google Plexes of years, it changes nothing visibly. This is a time that is so long that you couldn't possibly comprehend it. To say it's astronomical is to do a disservice to it. Astronomical scales of time and space are dwarfed, rendered minuscule, a blip, an imperceivable moat of static on a time frame this long. And I realized that not being a PhD physicist, I am way outside my comfort zone to actually calculate the Poincaré recurrence time of Minecraft with any degree of accuracy. But it did get me thinking. The Poincaré recurrence time of any given system is dependent on the number of possible microstates in that system. An atom over here turned this way, over there slightly turned the other way, etc, etc. And I thought to myself, is it even possible to count the total number of microstates of Minecraft? Is it possible to calculate, to count exactly how many game states there are? The answer is yes. And I did it. And boy, let me tell you, things get huge so freaking fast. So let's get on with it. How many possible games of Minecraft are there? Join me in a journey through power towers, broken calculators, and the biggest numbers this channel has ever made. First of all, let's in more simple terms go over what it is we're talking about here and what it is we're calculating. Let's say, for the sake of simplicity, we have a really tiny Minecraft world that's only two blocks wide, two blocks long, and one block high, meaning that we have four free spaces to put blocks in if we want. And let's say that we only have two types of blocks to work with. If we consider that a space can be empty as well, how many possible states does this game have? Well, this spot here can be empty empty, or it can have block one or block two in it. So there's three possibilities here. For the space next to it, it's the same thing. In fact, all spaces have only three states. And in order to calculate exactly how many states this world can be in, we have to take into account that if this space is empty, all the other spaces can have any one of three states as well. And that's the same for every possible combination of blocks we can put down first. And thankfully, instead of actually putting each possibility in place and counting them, we can 
just like very easily multiply these numbers together. Three in this case for each available space. Three times three times three times three, or more simply three to the fourth power, which gives us a surprisingly large, but still quantifiable and understandable result of 81. This is how all those sandwich shops got away with saying, oh, there's over 1 million sandwiches here. They just like counted mayo and mustard as their own sandwiches, essentially. So in the simplest terms, all we have to do is figure out how many spots there are in a Minecraft world, how many things can go in those spots and multiply them all together and we're good to go, right? Well, yeah, actually it is that simple. There's a few complicating factors, but it's actually not as complicated as figuring out how many viable Mario Maker levels there are because there's way less hard-coded limitations about what can be in a game in total. We are, however, going to be ignoring chunk load distance because it just makes things too difficult and we're going to treat each Minecraft world as an actual living world that is fully loaded. That said, simpler doesn't necessarily mean easier and tiny mistakes in the early stages can mean disaster consequences for the future, so we really want to make sure we get all of our pieces right. Let's take another model world for example, and let's start small. Let's say we have another 2x2 two two world with uh, two block types available for placement, and we have, say, like one creeper that can be placed exactly in the center of any space and can be facing one of four cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. First, let's simplify this down to one block. This block can be in one of three states, empty, block one, or block two. There can also be a total of five creeper states in it, one for no creeper at all, and four for the four cardinal directions it can be facing when placed there. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to claim that an entity can be placed in an empty spot, even though it'd just start falling through the non-floor or die or something else. This means that each block can have a total of three times five or 15 different states, but there are four possible slots, so we have to raise this to the power of four, which in this very small example gets us 50,625 different permutations of worlds. This is a lot, but there's some good that came out of this small example. It gave us our model. Creeper states times block states raised to the power of however many available slots you have on the board. Let's change creeper states to entity states to generalize and bam! Simple as that, we can literally use this to figure out how many possible total games of Minecraft are possible possible in the entire universe. Are you pumped? I'm pumped. I'm losing my mind over here. Okay, so simple. All we have to do is figure out exactly how many blocks are placeable, how many entity states there are, and how many slots are actually available. Let's do the very last one first, because frankly, it is the easiest. I have already gone over why Minecraft worlds are 100% not infinite in uh, some video of mine somewhere, and I'm sure I ranted about it, so I'm not gonna do it here, but for the record, there is a size limit to Minecraft worlds, and it's 60 million blocks by 60 million blocks in the X and Y direction, and two 256 blocks in the Z direction, which gets us a total of 921 quadrillion block spaces to work with. So that goes here in the exponent spot, which whew, I can tell you is enough to break most calculators out there, no matter what is in the base spot. The next easiest to figure out is the number of block states, but it is by no means actually that easy. There's essentially 425-ish normal-ish blocks that can just be placed with 10 buttons, 9 doors, which can be opened or closed, 36 stairs, which can be upside down and facing the four cardinal directions, which really means there's more like 288 stairs. Beds take up two slots each, as do a few other items, so they kind of count as just half an item each, but they also can be placed facing the four cardinal directions, so instead of 16 beds, or eight if you have them, it's actually kind of like we have 32 beds. Slabs are their own separate block, unless you place another one on top, and ugh, there's pressure plates and trap doors, and whew, all said and done after crunching the numbers and counting grass and flowers and how they grow and redstone, there's over 41,720 states that just one block spot can be in, which is incredibly overwhelming, but it's absolutely nothing compared to the number of entity states there are, because wow, oh wow, did things quickly get out of hand with that one. In our initial example earlier, we took one creeper in the middle of a square facing one of four directions, but that is a childishly simplistic way to show how an entity 
entity can be placed because mobiles or mobs or entities or whatever you want to call them can be in any number of subdivisions within one single block up to 1000 subunits in any direction. If a square coordinate is one by one block, an entity can be placed anywhere within 1000 divisions this way and 1000 that way, meaning essentially we're measuring the game in millimeters and a creeper or a zombie or player can be in one of one million different positions in just one block alone, but it gets worse because they can turn granularly and can look up and down, specifically 360 degrees in either direction, but it's measured down to the tenth of the degree, so you can look up to 3600 points side to side and 3600 points up and down, meaning you can look at exactly 12.96 million different precise directions, coupled with the 1000 different sub spots you can be standing in, that means one, one monster, player, or what have you, in just one block can be standing in over 12.96 trillion different precise positions. And just for the sake of saving my own life, I'm going to ignore jumping and crouching and assume that only one entity can take up one block at a time and you guys can deal with it because it really honestly will not matter in the end. With 72 mobs and one player, this means that for just one block, there's over 946 trillion and one different entity states. That number goes right here in our formula. <laughs> oh boy. But technically, that means we're done. All we have to do is hit enter, except, well, that broke my spreadsheet, and that calculator, and that one, and that one, and that one. Even calculators that supposedly can handle huge numbers are crumbling at this beast. I tried building a calculator in Python, and frankly, I am not smart enough to make one because I believe numbers this big require special algorithms to figure out, which is where the website Wolfram Alpha comes in. Mwah! I love you so much you guys anyway they can handle it and it gives us the answer of 10 to the 10 to the 19.25 different combinations of blocks players animals monsters and everything from redstone to switches per one world wait one world ah the nether the end i forgot about those they have the same number of block spaces as the main overworld meaning our available slots for blocks and item placements isn't 921 quadrillion it's it's three times that at 27 quintillion slots, which actually bumps our final number up to a whopping 10 to the 10 to the 19.733, which doesn't seem like a lot, but that extra amount is actually so much bigger than the other amount that I can't even like, I can't even explain to you how much bigger it is. So we did it. We figured it out, which, you know, wasn't even really that hard to tell you the truth. It took a while to count the items, find a calculator that would work, but it was nothing like impossible. It's not like I had to count the number of possible items and chests, and then I have to... Oh, god dang it. No! 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 I forgot about the chests! Ah! Okay, fine. We will do the chests for the sake of, like, not pulling out my own hair. We're going to ignore that there are ways to nest chests within chests for effectively infinite carry capacity, and we will treat a chest as one block that can hold 27 different items in it. Then, what we do is take every combination of items and stacks of items that can be put in chests and count them as its own type of block. Then we can just add that number to the number of block states, and we don't have to change our formula around. The problem is that there's over 500 10 items that stack in stacks of 64, 135 single stack items, and like 20 items of various stack sizes, leading us to a total, if we count it all out, with each stack being anything from 1 to 64, counting as its own item, over 33,095 combinations of items. Per chest? No. Per slot per chest, meaning 33,095 to the power of 27 slots of different 
ways chests can be arranged, giving us a truly huge number of possible chests. 1.08 times 10 to the power of 122. That is more chest combinations than there are atoms in the universe. Ugh. So we add this monstrosity to the 41,720 block states we calculated before, hit enter on our formula again, and this should get us all of our actual final number of possible worlds and ah dang it, I forgot the seeds. There's 4.2 billion seeds that dictate how many worlds there are. Okay, so we actually chuck that at the front end and put all of this in parentheses and multiply the entire massive formula we had before by 4.2 billion to account for the seeds and our final grand total answer of how many, literally how many, total different games and states of Minecraft that there are is 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 1.313 three, four games of Minecraft. Holy smokes. Okay, in all honesty, the seeds thing is just for show because if you drop it off the front, it literally doesn't change a single thing about this number. I just wanted to put it there because it was dramatic. This is actually good for us because like, what if I made a mistake? It's possible. What if this number I calculated, if it's a, uh, if it's 50% wrong, what if I messed up so much that I am off by half? That is a big margin of error, right? Well, if you divide this number by two, literally nothing changes. Nothing. I could be 50% wrong in my calculations and we'd still arrive at this figure. It is that stupendously large. I could have an accuracy of one billionth of a percent and you'd still not see this answer budge. Imagine that! One out of every one billion assumptions I made in this calculation could be totally and completely wrong and you wouldn't see any of it. This number is big beyond words. I can't even write down the number of digits it would have. Nobody could. A Planck time is the smallest unit of time we have at approximately a uh, decimal followed by 44 zeros and then a one. It's that many seconds. If we turn every atom in the observable universe into a tiny computer capable of creating one of these Minecraft states somehow, and they each created one every Planck time, we would create approximately 10 to the 124 Minecrafts per second. That is a lot. That is more games than you could ever play, than any human could ever play. If we dedicated the entire universe to creating these Minecraft worlds for a Google of years, that's 10 to the 100 years. That'd be 3.155 times 10 to the 231 Minecrafts made. If we created Minecraft states at this rate and used Googles of years, a Google being, by the way, a rough estimate of when our universe will actually experience heat death a dearth of energy, essentially where nothing else is possible. If we ran Minecraft generators for this long, we wouldn't even come close to making this many states. In fact, if we divide this number by the fastest output of Minecrafts one could ever hope to create in the lifespan of one universe using the universe as one giant Minecraft production machine, you still couldn't ever make any of these decimals up here budge. It would take the lives of more universes than we could possibly ever count to create every single possible iteration and permutation of Minecraft. And the number itself is so big that if you tried to accurately picture it in your head, your brain would collapse into a black hole. And I dubbed this number, this amazing number, uh, uh, I already did Minecraft Plex a really long time ago. <laughs> Ooh, oh boy. Can't name it after myself, that is stupid. We will name it the Minecraft Universal Constant. Yeah, that'll do it. Sincerely, Austin. I'd like to give a personal shout out to my high tier patrons, Mads Jurgensen, Jared Beecher, Edit AmTP, Nicholas Spillinger, Marissa Resnick, and Mazer. If you guys make this show possible, I love you so much. Mwah.